morning, everyone. My name's Caitlin. I'm the manager of the gardens here at Penn Tentry Glen. It's one of my favorite things to do when I'm not birding. Now today, what I want to talk to you about in this video is what is a native, what is a non-native, and what is an invasive. This plant right here that I've been helping out is a service berry. It is a native shrub. Now, this meaning native is that it's found here naturally. The ones that aren't found here naturally are called non-natives. They are from other countries, they are from other regions, and that's what I have right here known as lesser celandine. This, I don't want in the garden. I want it gone. So that's why I'm gonna remove it. This is also classified as an invasive. An invasive is a non-native that is causing harm to the environment or to humans. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna venture around and I'm gonna show you different non-natives and what you can do to help and plant something that is native. Many species of plants have multiple common names. That's why people usually use the scientific names. One example of that is what I'm sitting in. You might call it myrtle, you might call it periwinkle, some people call it vinca. Regardless of what you call it, it is a very invasive ground cover. All these purple flowers you see are one plant. Underneath, the roots are spreading so much that it overtakes a landscape. This is one example of an invasive species. Now what you can do, instead of buying vinca or myrtle or periwinkle for your yard, you can buy different things like partridge berry or even running strawberry bush. Both of those are great native covers that will help wildlife, which we'll get into in a little bit when we talk about the benefits of native plants versus the drawbacks of invasive plants in a habitat. Another invasive plant is Multiflora rose. Now this was planted back in the 1800s as a natural fence row. What happened from there is it spread everywhere and it's a very common invasive to find in natural areas and pretty much anywhere you look. How you can tell if it's the invasive multiflora rose or the native roses is by a couple different features. If you look here, you can see that there's different thorns that are actually hooked versus the native roses that are gonna come straight out. That's one distinguishing feature. Another is when you look at the base of where the leaves are, you can kind of see these fine looking hairs. They're not truly hairs, but that's what they look like. Those are on the invasive rose and not the native ones. The final spot is on the rose hips, which are right here. The multiflora rose hips are much smaller versus the native ones that are much bigger. They're probably about double the size of this. The native ones that you can plant are prairie rose and swamp rose, which are both very, very common and natural to Ohio. Multiflora rose, if you have it, you can cut it down and replace it with something native. Sometimes gardening can take you to really unexpected spots, kind of like me standing in the middle of this shrub. But what I really wanted to get to was this vine that you see right here. This is Celastris. It is an invasive vine from Asia that is taking over a lot of landscapes. What happens is it will wind up a tree or a shrub and it will start to choke it out and eventually the tree dies, but the vine persists. What I'm gonna do, I want it gone. So I'm gonna prune it and I'm gonna remove it. If you do want Celastris in your yard, there are native varieties, also known as American Bittersweet. They are great to have, but it's also difficult to find them. Don't plant this, plant the native American bittersweet. Frequently what I'm asked is what is the impact of invasive or non-native species on an area? There are many. One of the biggest being the food source and the habitat for native animals, such as the bird species, the squirrels, the chipmunks, deer, raccoons, anything that is native is impacted by the invasive species that you find. What happens is that some of the species that we've been talking about, or a lot of the other ones that are invasive, they will actually prevent the growth of certain plants. By preventing those native plants from growing, they're taking away a food source that the animals are used to. That is very impactful. So what you can do to help is you're able to plant native plants that then can provide food for the animals. If you go to your local nurseries, that is a great place to start to help plant and help these animals. Well, there you have it. You learned about non-native and invasive species and what you can do to help the environment and help the animals by planting native plants. 
Now I got a lot to do. I've got a lot of things to plant, to prune, and to weed. So I'm gonna get back to work. My name is Caitlin. I'm an interpretive naturalist with the Lake Metro Parks, and thank you for listening in.